Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Wappleville. I'm just trying to get some things set up here. Let's see if I can't get the the chat thing working. I have no idea if that's even showing up on the screen yet. But we'll see what we can do here. Got to type in passwords. We've got ourselves an untamed beast from Warcry that we're going to be working on. One of the things that's going to be a little bit interesting about this is we're going to try and work with some of this vellum foliage here. Looks a little bit like that when it's painted. So we'll get closer up on that. And I just want to see here if I can do this All right now. One second here. Just trying to get this here. That's more like it. We've got to authorize this thing, which means typing in passwords, which you can probably hear me doing right now. Let's see how that works. Almost there. Makes it a little bit easier for me to see the chat and I get this thing to work. So I think we've got it. And we're just going to go with uh, we like that opacity. And then let's go with this. Let's make the words a little bit bigger here. One second. Uh, I know we want them bigger. Let's see what that does. Hopefully it actually works. I'm going to move my chat over here. And let's just... Here. So again, what we're going to try and do is use some of this stuff right here. See that? you got your little plants right there. Maybe stick that in this area roundabout. Let's see what else we have that's fun. We're going to be using our usual let's mix of contrast paints and then some other stuff. We've got some of the Reaper paints. Typical lighter colors here like Maiden Flesh and Maggot White. And some of our liners here. Red liner, brown liner, sepia liner. You know the drill by now. I'll make this a little bit smaller, so just in case we have any chat stuff going on, we can see that. We're actually going to tighten up on this a bit. Let's make sure we've got ourselves some nice focus. I'm also going to change my lights around real quick here. There. All right, let's, yep, yeah, I don't think we need to go any closer on him. We're going to set our vellum, vellum foliage aside here. We're going to do some quick little glazes and such. Oh, yeah. These skulls right here, see these big old skulls? Those are from Green Stuff World. They have several different sheets of skulls and books. And I think now they actually have candles and such. So those are pretty neat. I just thought it, it kind of lends that whole barbarian theme right there. We've got those laid out on the palette here. Brown liner red liner, sepia liner, and these are those two off-whites. Up here we've got the contrasts. And what we're going to do, I'm going to play around with some of these. So this is some of the wildwood here. And if I mix it in with the brown liner, what it actually lets me do is it lets me use water to thin it down. I do actually have the contrast medium now, so we could potentially use that. We're just going to start up with a mix of this is some of that snake bite leather. And I might even use a little bit of the water to thin that down. Then we're going to go with some of the some of the sepia liner right there. Just going to make sure that we don't have I don't have something blocked or I'm not off the screen. And let's go with a little more of the Wildwood. It's a mix of the red liner and some of the wildwood. Most of this is just to get the primer out of the way. And the primer, of course, is same old Badger, badger Stino Res. Here, let's get a little more of this work in. This is some of the Leviathan Blue. I usually like to take the Leviathan Blue and the wildwood, mix those together. Blue and brown are going to make black. That's just kind of how it works. 
You have a little more of the blue in there. You get a little bit, bit of a different gray. Then, say if you had a little more of the wild wood in there. And now we're going to go back to maybe something like the snake bite leather. Just alternating the colors here and there. As I work my way around this, see we've got more of the brown and red liner. It just kind of ends up looking sort of dark on the screen. Oh, hey there, Will. How's it going? Now, it has been a few weeks since I last had a chance to do one of these. That was not the easiest of the last couple of weeks because we had, well, back-to-back -back conventions, which already makes that a challenge. But on top of that, we had Kathy's computer thing going on. I was actually trying to get another computer myself, an older one, kind of from the same generation as Kathy machi Kathy's machine. I was trying to get that working again so that I could start with some more terrain-type videos. There's the other added benefit, I suppose, of having regular paint in with the contrast paint. Because what I'm doing here is chopping up a makeup sponge. We're going to go in here. See, so we take some of that paint away. When you do that with just the contrast paint, it doesn't seem to like that very much. Kind of leaves some holes and watermarks, and that's one of the reasons why I'm mixing it with regular paint. So, so you can pull away some of that stuff. Now I'm going to get the yield blue glove on here. Oh, yeah, it's... Somehow we managed to, well, survive both of these events. There was some crazy stuff. No doubt about it. Oh, my goodness. The the snow, the deer, the hunters, I mean, you name it. There was some interesting stuff going on. The, the snow especially made things a challenge. No doubt about that. Drove up there in snow, and then Thursday... The snow was really interesting because we were we were driving on the left side of the road, which in England is fantastic and legal, but here you really don't want to be doing that, especially on a country highway. But when there's a giant snow drift, that's you don't really have much of a choice. You have to kind of take the rules of the road into your own hands. And let's see, what have we got back Monday night, essentially, and it's been a furious thing of unpacking. Heck, just now, maybe, I don't know, a half an hour ago, hey, Trevor, how's it going? Yeah, this is a little bit of a surprise. I know it was originally supposed to be something else, but I, I saw that vellum foliage, and I just thought, you know what? We've used it on the, the Dark Sword stuff and the Reaper stuff. And I thought, ah, let, let's let's give it a shot on these guys here. Oh, and and you see those uh, photos in the tutorial or the corners down there? I found those at the very last second. I thought, mm, that could be neat. That could be kind of neat. So once again, just like before, this is the combination of some of the. Oh, is it, this is the Fire Slayer Flesh. Yeah, yeah, that's Fire Slayer Flesh right there. Mixing it with some of those Reaper paints. We're just trying to set ourselves a little bit of a backdrop here. This is the same thing. Normally I do this with just the liner paints, but sometimes it can be hard to get these. Speaking of liner, we just switched to sepia liner right there. Now we're going to go to... Some of the snake bite leather. See, it just makes it a little more intense. We're just trying to get ourselves some some color variety here. Yeah, I think uh, that's. Oh yeah, I just got all of the Lizard Men Blood Bowl team prepped for the next army painting series. I got more Sculpey baked so that we can do the basing episode. That's gonna be recorded tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to that because I, I have the Blood Bowl pitch and 
what we're going to do is make bases to match. I think we're going to do the overgrown side because I think all the Blood Bowl pitches that they make are two-sided. But we are going to match, I think, the overgrown side. That could be sort of fun. I think you can see how we got some reddishness here, some intense yellow here, a little bit of neutral over here. Now this is more of a almost a purplish brown up here. You know, let's go straight up, straight up wildwood over here and over here, like so. Back to the fire slayer flash here and over here. So I do apologize if the voice is weird, because there's a lot of talking over the weekend at Game Hole Con. And I was glad I wish it could have been more, but I was not there to take care of the auction, unfortunately, of the Keladrax Bones Dragon that went for the the charity, the Wounded Warriors project. It got five hundred. Definitely would have liked to see more, but I think some of the folks in the crowd didn't really even know what that was. Especially since I had to bring it there in pieces. There, so I'm just going to double up on a few of those glazes like so. What we'll do is as this little guy dries here, well, actually I'm going to show you some of the other stuff that we've been doing with war cries. So here is one of the finished cipher lords. I really had a blast with these guys. This is actually part of my latest army painting series. I think it was series 14. I'm going to take you over here which should go to... Aha! Uh -huh, there we go. Now you can see what the group looks like there. Uh, the mirror blades. I just had so much fun with these guys. It all started out with the basing episode. And then we did the color test figure, and then it led to an entire unit ready for the table. So see the bases right there with the fun little zinch eyes looking at you. And the figure on the right, that was the color test figure. But lots of object source lighting, lots of metals, all kinds of fun stuff going on with that. Now what I'm going to do... Let's get some of this stuff right here. Now, a couple of ways that you can play with this. See how easy it is to pop out of here? See all that? See the shadows there? That starts to pop out. I've, I've done it two ways. I tried to paint it first, then pop it out. It's actually a little bit better if you try and remove these guys. Now, unlike some of the paper foliage that I've used in the past, this tends to be a little more rugged. See how we're just kind of flexing it like this? Check that out. See how it starts to all just kind of by itself start popping out of there? Now I still have the original paper backing on here. And if you're wondering where these come from, let's make sure there's no shiny there. See that wicked elf right there? That's where all this comes from. And there's several types. There's water lilies, lily pads, and the vellum butterflies. So see we're just gonna see how we're just kinda working this. Working this over here. Now what we might do is take away our paper backing here. There. And I might grab myself a little tool here. Let's see if we can find something that's got a bit of an edge on it. That's better. Something like this. See, it doesn't take much effort to pop this out. Some of that paper foliage, holy smokes. It takes so much effort to get get that stuff popped out of there. You just end up ripping it, destroying it. Not fun. So I already got one one of those fronds completely removed. Here, let's get another one out here. Yeah, when I tried painting it while it was still on the paper, 
it just it wanted to stick a little bit more. Seemed to do much better. And I just punched it out first. Look for most of the way there. Just gonna pop off a few more of these. Almost there. The other nice thing is most of the paper stuff. Well, not only do you have to use a like a piece of wire to hold that stuff in place. It's not flexible. You can't bend it into the nifty shapes. And it also doesn't come in a, f a set of five fronds like this. So we're almost free and clear. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So see that? We got ourselves a whole nice little set of fronds there. If one comes off, actually, it's you're better off having one or two separate. I actually kind of like doing these in sets of threes and twos. There, let's straighten out a few of these. And then I'll take something like, here we go, something like this here. A little bit of blue tack. I'll take this. Get that stuck on there. Not too tight, though. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to have to be pulling this stuff off of there. Here, just give it a little gentle press, like so. And then let's uh, find ourselves some kind of a some kind of a green here, like that. And we're going to go semi-watery on this. It's kind of a yellowish green here. Now the nifty thing also about the vellum plants is that they're kind of on the transparent side, which is really good. Because I, when you think about it, actual leaves and plants, they've got a little bit of transparency to them definitely have a little transparency so it's that's one little extra layer of realism and this stuff does not get crispy when it's painted so there's there we go that's a nice little thing on one side we can let that dry paint the other side and I mean about the flexibilities look at that now that just is turning every which way it's turned back on itself it's twisted really hard to do that with typical foliage. Now this figure actually is part of my Dark Sword pledge level. That's on the Patreon page and the link is floating by and it's also sitting there on the bottom of the screen. So here's, I'm going to try and grab the other frond here and we'll just stick that on here and see if we can't throw ourselves a little bit of a glaze onto that. There. Now as I, yeah, I don't want to mess with this just yet, but I did want you to see, see how the color sort of shows through right there? With the paper foliage, it just doesn't do that. So we're going to set that aside now. I'm going to go back to this because he's much drier. So you can see how we've got actually sort of a reddish tint here on the flesh. It's brown up here. Kind of a bluish brown up here. We have a whole bunch of different tints. Now on the rocks here, not going to do a whole bunch there because we've got foliage that's going to be going in that area. But look how we just took a little bit of that maggot white. Let's see what we're doing here. We're getting ourselves a little bit of green. I think it's safe to switch my lights back around here. There. That's better. It's a whole lot easier for me to see what the heck is going on here. And now we're starting to get a different type of contrast between our rocks and those skulls. And we've got this piece of stone, some kind of masonry here. 
want it to kind of have an overgrown look. Just bring this right down. I can even start to think about well, what are we going to do with this fur here? What kind of fur is it going to be? Just your typical sort of gray, grayish fur. Not quite sure yet. It sort of depends on what happens with the skin tones. Here, you know, let's darken up the leather on the boots there just a tad. Let's make sure we've got coverage everywhere. As, as I said, the, the main goal of all of that initial glazing there is to get it away from the primer. And with your skulls here, since this is not some kind of desert environment, you're really going to want to keep your skulls on the darker side. You don't want to give it that, that bleached bone effect. I mean, if this is supposed to be a jungle after all, they would definitely blacken and they would not be bleached out because there's really not a lot of sun doing that. They are soaking up lots of, I guess, water and minerals and, and such. And so some of this is still obviously, it's still wet. Not a bad thing. Because that means I could take a pause here. And go back over to my foliage over here and maybe turn this over, paint the other side. Just going to make sure that this doesn't get torn here. There. So that's the thing is that if I press too hard, it will stick to that. That's it. We, we were able to get that, pry that thing off of there without destroying it. So let's do our Little thing with the green again here. Get the other side. Put some green on it. Now let's be real careful about this side over here. Here, let me I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit, make it easier for me to get that in the picture for you. There. And sometimes the paint will stick there too. But, you know, these things are pretty darn rugged. That's That has been the biggest surprise for me with these vellum plants is how much punishment they basically can take. It's pretty wild. All right, we finally got that removed. I know it's tough to see what the heck is going on here with these plants. It's pretty tough to see that at this point. But we're just investing in the future right now. All right, so paint it up. It's nice and loose. It will not stick the way it did before. Which means now we can go back and, oh look, I've got this kind of convenient green that we're going to start to add into this here somewhere. It's like, oh, say here. Was the verdict on contrast paints or, that's what Will asks, are they contrast paints basically a substitute for the clear and liners? It seemed to be the, what was it, the Wildwood well, there's your brown liner. The snake bite leather was your sepia liner. Red liner, I think it was sort of a combination of maybe wild wood and the fleshed hair red, I would say. The Leviathan blue definitely compared to the blue liner, for sure. Now, I may try some of the other contrasts and, and see what other do they 
how comparable are they, I guess, to some of the liners? The warp, what was it warp stone green or was no warp lightning green? That was pretty comparable to this right here, the clear green from Reaper. Now you can see I've added some, basically some green in here. We're gonna do some of that even on this crazy weapon right here. You know me, I like to spread that color around everywhere. We'll even throw some of it here on his skin tone. So watch what's going to happen right in here. Now I'm going to actually turn up the brightness a touch. And we're also going to turn up the color intensity a touch. There. And see how that's kind of working there in your shadow areas of the skin tone. Here, let's give him a bit of 5 o'clock shadow there. Like you do. Mm, let's do some of that here too. And some over here. Now in some ways we don't want to get too involved with skin colors because we want to do some of the tattoo stuff. Well, we're just going to end up painting over and hiding most of that. And the more complex we make the skin tones underneath those tattoo patterns, it's going to be that much harder to see the patterns. Now let's see what we can do. There's some of our snake bite leather. We're going to mix that. Some of that maiden flesh. Let's go a little more with that. Let's go make sure this is on the screen for you. Hey there, Gary. Oh, and Merrick gets to catch this live. Yeah, I'm sorry that there haven't been more of these the last few weeks, but as I was talking about earlier, we have been gone most of the last two weeks. Actually, more like the last three weeks. It has been a weird, very weird October slash November, that's for sure. Here, let's get a little bit of this up into here, too. A little bit of that up into here. And don't be afraid to utilize the fingers. Do a little bit of finger painting. Going to hit some of these skulls here. Yeah, the whole idea is don't get those too light because we want to have uh, maybe not necessarily a blackened skull, but at least parts of it that are looking kind of on the stained side. Might even go with a little touch of that green in there. Well, let's see what we can do here. See, we're using the larger brush here, especially in these initial stages. I suppose the other thing, too, when you make those skulls more of a blackened, stained, whatever you want to call them, makes the, the weapon, the bone weapon, stand out a little bit more. Because it, I guess it makes more sense for this sort of weapon here to be a little bit more on the cleaner side or bleached out side. You don't think you'd want your your main weapon or whatever to be all sort of just uh, blackened and almost rotting. That's probably not going to be too handy in a fight. Yeah, really enjoyed those Cypher Lords. Uh, let's see, Kathy has the Corvus Cabal. I actually want to paint a version of those too. So you'll probably eventually be seeing those. 
I think it was the oh let's see the not shattered spear now uh, the the snake guys and I always I just kind of forgot about not shattered spear it's something whatever <laughs> I'm gonna try and get a box of those guys too and and see what we can do with them oh splintered fang that's what they are yeah, I want to give those guys a shot because they look like they could be interesting. This could be fun, potentially with some kind of verdigree on it, maybe. So I might go that way with it. Not quite sure if that's supposed to be... Well, I'm thinking that's probably not metal. Yeah, it's sort of a sculpted, almost like a 40k conduit right there. But yeah, I think we'll, st I think we'll avoid the, the conduit look for that. We'll find something else for it, too. Now this is that, that all-over method that I always talk about. Now let's play with some skin tones. And that's some of the red liner. Hmm. Let's go with some of the Fire Slayer flash in there. And now we'll go into some of our mid-tones on the skin. We've got that... already have that green down in the shadow areas that we can play with. Now, like I said before, it's if I'm going to go super heavy on those tattoo patterns or whatever, well, then it makes sense for me to as I said, keep these colors a little bit simple and maybe not get them too too light. Don't go too heavy on the, the shading of this stuff. little more there. Let's see what else we've got that is skin tone. And we can, like I said, we can always add some more little glazes here and there to things. This is essentially what I would always refer to as a shaded base coat. That's all it is. I'm going to put a little bit of this here. Some of these skulls. It's not to say that I won't maybe throw some accents on some parts of the skulls to bring those out a bit. I have to go back to this thing right here. Splintered Fang. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Merrick. I kind of forgot about them. I, I think we, we saw, obviously, the Corvus Cabal and the Unmade, I believe. That's the other one. We do, I just always call them the Stilt Walkers. But that was another one that we would both like to take a shot at. Let's see, what do I have? Oh, oh and the Ossiarx. Well, who knows when they'll actually get here. But those have been ordered. And that will be more Army Painter Pledge level stuff and some more live sessions. I even want to work on those with some oils. Actually, I would have been real tempted to work on this guy with oils. Boy, it would have been really fun, too. That would have been a blast. Now, some of you, like on the, the Warcry groups and such, you haven't, unless you've seen some of my previous live sessions with the oils, you haven't really had a chance to see what that looks like. When you're just doing one figure like this, it's it's fun, but it's not really the best use for the oil paints where they really, 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 really do some serious work is when you are using them on 5, 6, 10, 20 figures. That's all of a sudden, that's where they really start to shine. You can see here, we do start to liven some things up here trying to find a few lights here and there still in that sort of shaded base coat kind of a sketching phase here and as always the people that see these all the time they know that there's just never white out on the palette certainly is uh, not this in, in early that's for sure 
definitely we're going to avoid having that white out there because it's just too much of a temptation to jump right to that. And when you do, that's when things start to get chalky. So many times I've had people say, ah, Jim, this this got chalky. I don't know what happened. And I say, well, was there white out on your palette? And almost inevitably that ends up being a culprit. Who murdered your paints? It was the white. Usually is. Now, actually, I didn't think this was bone, but I think it actually is. I'm still getting used to just the, the idea of actually painting figures that are 100% fantasy because the Song Ice and Fire stuff, that's darn near historical by comparison. The feathers of the Cabal look like they'd be super fun to paint. Oh, you bet your bottom dollar it is, especially when you're fixing to do them all zinchy. Because, uh, well, pfft. okay, you can tell by the by the cipher lords that there's a there's a thing for zinch, and I just I saw that Corvus and I thought, hmm, I think I think there could be some zinchy stuff happening there. Because can you ever have too much zinch? I don't think so. Because love me some zinch. That's why I have my zinch tainted. Tomb Kings. And with the Ossiarchs, I'd, I'd like to sort of revisit that scheme somehow. I really don't quite know how that's going to happen. Now here, let's try something. Let's try a little something here. We got that Leviathan blue. I'm going to lighten it up with some of the other stuff there. That kind of gives it a almost a purplish type of color here. I'm going to say, eh, let's say that maybe this is actually a, maybe that's metal. Let's see what we can do to give that a bit of a metal, some kind of a metal look here. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's supposed to be leather. If it is, we can always switch it back. can always switch it back. Let's get some green into that. Maybe make it, give it some kind of a hammered, kind of primitive metal look to it. Because there's really not a whole lot of other stuff that's, that's metal. At least not on this guy. I mean, they're supposed to be really your... What, polar opposites to the, oh, who's the other guy? The Iron Golems, right, that come in that starter box. Kathy did manage to get the terrain put together. So that is actually going to be primed up and hoping to paint that also on some of these live streams. Not just mine, but potentially on hers too. Yeah, you know, I kind of like the idea of having that little bit of metal core there. But let's let's see if I can throw some some green into this. Cuz why not? I mean, it's it's green. Totally obvious color from metal. Well, I guess not. Got a choice to make here. I am going to take Basically, it's some of my green, some of the brown liner, and we're just going to throw this in here. Because, yeah, that makes more sense being darker there. A little more sense. Let's see if I can I just go a tad bit darker there. And then we are going to take some of that down here to our piece of whatever the heck this is down here bit of ruins some kind now I I don't think I ordered the uh, whatever the the piece of Ossiarch or bone reapers whichever way you want to pronounce it terrain I thought that would be also fun 
to paint in some live streams, but could even make some just fun alternate terrain for some Warcry games. Because why not? That could be interesting. Uh, it would look great with the blue turquoise. That's what Marek says. And, and Gary says, I was just going to say Zinch Cabal. Yeah, boy. I, As soon as I saw, obviously, the one guy. Now the other ones, eh, maybe they're not quite such obvious zinchiness there. But we'll figure out something. We'll find out something. Do I do the same base as the Cypher Lords? Maybe, maybe not. I was... Thinking maybe that's where I do my demon marble. Or well, we'll find something. There's got to be some kind of interesting, different thing. Because, you know me, it's, I'm not going to repeat a lot of the standard color schemes or stuff that you've already seen. Kind of not much point to that when you think about it. Because you, you've already seen how to paint those other things. Why not see something new and different? Speaking of which, here we are going to take, instead of always all of the bone stuff just being some variation of brown or whatever, it's actually got a little bit of gray in there, even here too. So we're going to get that closer for you to see and almost a bit of purple in there just to give it something a little different if all it is is just a more kind of a yellowish tan color or whatever eh, just not going to be super interesting here let's get so a little more of the fire slayer flesh in there is going to make that skin tone a little bit warmer I don't necessarily want the skin tone to get too light anyways because I mean if they've been as we would assume exposed to the elements for as long as we think they have been they'd be a little more of a swarthy skin tone Now I'm not quite sure where all of those tattoo things might go. Obviously I was going to focus on the shoulder here, which is going to present some challenges because you've got just a wee bit more muscle striations here than, say, the real person tattoos that you see in those two little boxes down there. And I'm talking about the two little boxes off to the bottom left and bottom right. That's why we started this a little bit later than I was originally thinking. It took uh, at least another half an hour to get stuff situated and set up here than I thought. I was hoping to start by 1.45 or 2 and... Instead, it was darn near an hour after that, so my apologies for an even later start. But I know for all of our friends over in Europe, it's a pleasant morning. It's it's breakfast time. It's got to be probably what in London, probably nine twenty-four. And I think maybe in Australia, well, at least on the eastern coast of Australia, probably separate time, either 524 or 624. Now, let's just keep building this up a little bit more. Now, you can still see that green there that's in our shadows. I want to lose that. So, again, we're... So this is where we're taking that Fire Slayer Flash and mixing it with a little bit of that Maiden Flash. You could use that. I'm sure there's any number of GW colors that would work exactly the same. And you could do a real similar thing to what we just did there. It's just taking the, the contrast paints and mixing those with opaque paints 
does a couple of things. It gives you sort of a semi-translucent paint that's almost like a glaze, but you don't have the whole watery thing going on and just sort of getting all over the place. Cost-wise, it's saving you on your contrast paints because you are not using as much. You're sort of extending the life of your contrast paints, which, you know, that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. I did think this guy would be, he would show up pretty well on the camera, it seems to be the case. Heck, some of our original glazes are still drying. Let's take, let's see, we something different. I'll take the Wildwood here, we'll mix it with some of the Maiden Flesh. Let's hit the boots right there. And I can throw out some more colors, too. I may just do that right now. I'm thinking of throwing out a red. That could either be Flesh Tears red or a clear red. Oh, what the heck? What do we got here is my... And there it is. Yeah. Flesh Tears red. I'm just going to throw that. And this little guy here. These little things here are just, just watercolor containers. And as you can tell, you know, I, I open up the container, pour some out, put it away. It goes with it's it's <laughs> it's put away. No chance of spilling your eight-dollar jar of precious wildwood or whatever the contrast paint might be all over your palette or table or you. So that's that's a little bit of reddishness there. Let's let's do that here. So what I'm doing is taking some of the, again, the Maiden Flesh here. The Flesh here is red. And I like to... There's kind of a blood vessel thing in certain parts of it. That's another area where I try to actually focus in. See here, we're getting a little bit more of that pink right there. Here, let's do... Seeing if I can... I'm just trying to zoom in a little bit for you. Now this is another place. See it right here on the back of the hand. Whole capillary thing, that sort of stuff going on. Oh, let's do that here too. Let's do that on the hands there, a little bit on the arm there. So now see we've got I think you can see it, the pinkishness here, also combine a little bit of the green. Kind of takes both of those, and believe it or not, we're going to take some of that same reddish pink, and we're going to set up our verdigris effect there. Oh look, we're even going to use it on the loincloth. We're even going to use some of that on the skulls down here. Because, I, and I brought my stickers. Oh, hey, Kamitrian, how's it going? Uh, this, let's see, I think the last, have you seen the two, well, here we go. <laughs> these guys, if you've seen these last couple of these, the Raptorix here that we did, well, that I did. I went to the, this little format right here. A couple of reasons. It's actually easier for me to see on my monitor from a distance. So it, that's that's kind of a plus. But it also, believe it or not, I could actually get what would we say tighter on the figure as well. I could actually zoom in more. So this. See how he's filling up almost the entire screen with the old layout. It was tough to actually get him to do that. So I thought that was another fun thing, fun possibility with the new layout. So see how we got some of those brighter pink things working in there? Now I'm going to go even more heavy 
Mm, not quite that heavy, but a little bit heavier on the maiden flesh. So I think the the Vizirian bust from Blackheart. That was the very first time I tried this different layout here. Oh, and I can see where the chat is too. That's that's another plus. And everyone else can also see it. So there was just four or five different reasons, kind of all in combination. This may still evolve and change. I may have to do it sort of differently for each. Now, if it's going to be a large creature or something, maybe I have to do a different setup. I don't know. Here, let's, let's see if we can't sneak in a little bit lighter tone here. But as always, I gotta remember to build evenly. You know, can't get too crazy with just skin tone. Gotta go, gotta go to the other stuff here. So, yeah, let's go back to our semi-purple type color here. I'm not sure if the spike sticking out of the leg stuff there is actually if those are metal or what the deal is with those those seem to be more like teeth got another one of these little throwing star type things over here let's well, let's get some of that somewhat bluish color on those and now on the and the furs have got to either have to go darker than the skin or well, let's see what happens when we throw a little bit of greenishness into that. See if that also separates from the skin. Yeah, that does it. That helps a bit. Where else are we going to go with this? We're going to go with some of this on our weapon right here. Hope you can see that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Coming through on it was, I think it was the last one that I did, or the last two. I don't know how it worked, because I didn't do anything different. It just worked. <laughs> it was a pleasant surprise. I, mean, I won't complain. But I don't know what I did differently but it worked the last time and it worked this time and oh man it's it's a whole lot easier for me to see than having about 15 different windows open because that's no fun trying to see through a forest of lights and cameras and everything else and I can actually yes I can make my screen bigger Thanks for reminding me. And I'm going to do that right now. Yeah, now I can see that. So much easier. And what are we looking at? 3.33. So only about an hour in. I just want to make sure I leave myself time, especially for the, the foliage stuff here, because we certainly want to see that. I, it's... You can always watch these later. It, you don't have to see them live. It's certainly a lot more fun for me when there's some company along for the ride. And even more fun when it's something like this where it's kind of new. Because that so the foliage on this could be real interesting. Now remember, I have to think, where the heck is she? She's over here. So I have to think, if I'm going to have foliage green like that, you know, I it, that's why I'm doing a lot of red. See how his, his boots have that red in them there? I'm trying to, it's the chess match. I'm trying to think, okay, if I'm going to have green right there, something green, let's have something that really makes that green stand out a bit more. What we're going to do is, I want these wrappings here. I want to do something. So this is the red liner that I'm using here. I'm going to see if I can't. 
So it looks like we're just wiping that all out. We're not. We're just doing something like this. Just going to use my finger there. Mm, let's do a little bit of toning down of that and that and that. Now up in here, do we go lighter? Do we go darker? I just grabbed me some green right here. Ow, that was a spike right in the finger. There's an awful lot of wrappings right here, so I'm just going to toss in some quick lights, and then we can maybe do some glazes into that. And all the while, the lightest thing that I've used so far Nothing more than made in flesh. Nothing that is white. It looks like it's white, but that's only because we built up enough darks to sort of create the impression that it's white. Now, ooh, I'm looking at this here. We could do some blood effects too. Ah, uh, maybe we'll try that. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's, it's fun having the the bone stuff here, but some blood effects might be interesting, especially if maybe some of those spatter down onto some plants or whatever. So, boy, that's a whole bunch of things to try and do all in one thing. But hey, why not? That's what we do. You know, even using a little bit of my maiden flesh here on well whatever that is potentially metal potentially not but if it is I'm gonna have to reflect something on here and we'll do that we'll do that over here I am gonna take some of this uh, green here See what we can do with our fur. I think the untamed beasts here, they'll probably be an exercise in things like fur, skin, tattoo. To me, the vellum foliage, that's about the, the one thing that you probably would never have seen somewhere else. Because it's a pretty darn new thing. Again, that's from Wicked Elf. I really enjoy it. I've, like I said, I've, I've used it a couple times. The vellum butterflies are pretty darn amazing. I was just talking with Trevor earlier today that I think I'm going to have to do an eBay thing and see if I can snag some of the Sylvaneth and maybe use them as a topic for Vellum Butterflies. Almost do it the, what is that, the Avatar look, right? Now here, let's get some, for the heck of it, let's get some green into here. We got all kinds of reddish colors. Let's make sure we're not forgetting some of our, our greens. It, it goes for a lot of stuff. Wood is the same thing. It tends to have a more believable look to it when, of all things, there's more green. I realize a lot of that just is a what? What are you talking about? More green. It's wood. It's supposed to be brown. Well, y yeah. But then how do you make brown? You mix green and red. Poof, brown. Uh, speaking of which, this is wild wood. And you thin it down a little bit here. Reestablish some, some darks. And now let's go even more wild wood. 
because you can use these oh the, the contrast paint is almost more of a glaze type of a thing they don't have to just be that sort of initial layer type of deal now let's just darken the heck out of this I'm gonna go with the Leviathan here the Wildwood and it's just gonna be real dark real dark up in here uh, yeah, Warcry is going to kill my Necromunda craze. Haha. -ha. Actually, ooh, speaking of which, I've got a Necromunda gang that I'm supposed to paint for somebody. So you'll be seeing at least that Necromunda. And there was something else, too. There was another, another Necromunda gang that I saw. Maybe it was... Uh, part of the new announcement or something don't be surprised if maybe I promise nothing but maybe there's some necromunda stuff that happens to float across the screen here and for sure I will be spilling some paint on some aeronautica planes Oh, uh, what did I just see today also? I think it was in the Warhammer community announcement. The watered down Fire Slayer flash right here, by the way. That could be something fun to go with the other aeronautica planes that I already have. Kindly donated by one of the Patreon subscribers. And that is really appreciated because as. I was not likely to be getting those on my own. Uh, it's Now, Kathy did play Aeronautica back in the day. She still has her original Aeronautica planes. I was doing the BFG thing back in the day. That was my, that was my special thing that I liked. Now, who knows? GF, uh, BFG comes back, uh, and they make a whole bunch of new stuff for it. Maybe you see that here too. Yeah, I'm liking the liking the extra darks. So that's again the Leviathan blue, a little bit of the wildwood, and then bam, we go down in here to really restore some darks. I'm gonna do a little bit of that here too, and here. Because sometimes when you go lighter. And you just don't see what you're wanting. Well, maybe that's when it's time to go the opposite way. Hey, Bethany. I was hoping that you'd be able to join this one. Since that this is the first opportunity I have had in weeks. And I was just telling folks earlier today. How it's just, it's really the neatest thing to be able to have. All my friends from way across the waters be able to sort of join in. Almost like a, we're all right here together painting. I, I've, I paint plenty of times just in silence or whatever. You know, with, well, okay. If, if I can have something playing in the background, it's going to be... Most likely a YouTube terrain video. And those that's me actually trying to train for you guys because I saw some nifty new water effects ideas. These are for the really heavy duty sort of crashing waves up against rocks. And if you guys remember the Liquitex heavy gel that we like to use for snow but also for things like waterfalls. Well, this this person took the snow flock, eh, like a woodland scenic snow flock, realistic looking foam, sea foam as far as color goes, but the texture, that's always been one of the hardest things for me to match, to do that sort of the, the frothy water type effect, to get it to have more than just like, oh, look, someone added white paint to their water effects. Yay, look at that, how fake that is. But this stuff with that snow flock in there, holy smokes, 
was just, that was kind of a game changer right there. I, I don't quite know yet, aside from maybe a few Lord of the Rings guys that might have like horses splash into water. I don't. Maybe if I do some kind of undead thing that has some kind of water theme to it, <laughs> Un pirate undead. I don't know. But see how we're we're starting to get a little bit of a pattern here in our. Oh, hey, Corvus. Yeah, well, we were we summoned you because we were talking about the Corvus Cabal. So we have now summoned Corvus Miniatures. Hopefully things have been going great for you. Me, I am just relieved the convention season officially is over. No more conventions till Adepticon. Because that really puts a huge dent well, in the, well, the filming schedule in general, but more specifically, our little get-togethers here. Because I, I, I tried, I was going to give it a try doing a, say, a YouTube Live out on the road. But, well, tch, not enough bandwidth there. I think there's just too many people making demands on the internet all at the same time. And it just tends to go boom. Oh, yeah. Let's let's now maybe start to find a few lighter lights. Oh, a convention there in Belgium starting with Saturday. Is, is it uh, any specific... Or is it more of a generalized thing? Like, uh, oh, what was it? The scale model challenge, right? That was just a couple of weeks ago, I think. That was the SMC. Or is it a much more local event? And, well, I don't know if you have painting contest stuff that you'll be doing or potentially tournaments. Here, let's let's take a look at what we've got here. So yeah, can you see we're starting to develop in here? See that little bit of reddishness there? Just the one day war games in general. More like a gaming oriented event. Boy, that's been the conversation that I've had with folks just here in general that well, conventions like Adepticon. Now that's that's a war gaming, you know, it's a, Sigmar, 40k, Star Wars Legion, Armada, all that kind of privateer press, even Mantic and all those guys having their events. But they, those are getting longer and longer and longer. The convention that I was just at, it, it started Thursday. And at Adepticon, there are events, official events that start Wednesday. Holy smokes, it's going to be a two week long convention pretty soon but it seems like over in Europe uh, salute is a one-day event right it seems like it's more one-day events there that that's focused I mean you better get in what you want to do but here yeah that well even Gen Con that's uh, Thursday is that's a real day. That's not just, oh, you know, a couple of informal things. Thursday, it's hordes of people smashing through the doors. But what's weird is it seems like Sundays are kind of a, a real meh. It seems like most of Sunday is just people packing up. And I understand why, as a person who's only ever really been a vendor at conventions, I understand why the whole packing process begins as soon as possible on Sunday. But Sunday is just, it seems like it's such a getaway day. Maybe that's why the conventions keep getting pushed as far as their start dates further and further forward. Sorry if there's more 
commentary on this and a little less uh, event is called crisis very similar to salute but without the painting comp and less figure painting actually there's another one here even more emphasis on historical war games oh that's good I'm just there for the fantasy and the shopping well there's that too actually well for me I actually will be doing oh gosh speaking of conventions I will be at Historic Con. Going to do sort of a Fort Wapple thing there. And I'm hoping the plan is to get into the Bolt Action Tournament there. Whether or not that happens, we shall see. We shall see. Now, you know what? We've been doing a lot of uh, green down here on this. Now, I don't want to get too late, but I think, ah, see how that's, see what's happening there. We got the green, we got this almost like a purple-blue here, and oh, look at our skull. Even though it's not very light, actually it's the opposite. See how we're, we're making the stone lighter than the skull. Let's uh, do some of that down here, too. Let's do some of that right, ah, good, right here, see? like that so that's one way of kind of getting your uh, what would we say our stained skulls to look a little darker without having to make them dark you just dark uh, lighten the area around it speaking of light interaction i'll put a little bit of that color into the skulls too because well why not why not I'm even going to put some of this into my fur here a touch. Let's get a little bit of this along the sides of that. Now, let's see if I've got, do I have any of these that have the bait? Aha, here we go. So here's another, see we've got the, the skulls here. Now, this is one of the other ones I was thinking of grabbing just to show you the, the tattoo things, but we can do this on successive videos there, so we'll do that. There's another one. This is a different type of cork right here, but you can see we've got the, the skulls in there. And for sure, this is another good one for those tattoos. So that's going to be the theme here for the Untamed Beasts, for sure. Now let's let's get ourselves a a brush of a smaller size here. Let's see what other fun little things that we can do on this guy. Let's see if we can't maybe give him some eyes. Maybe do a little bit more development on some of the, if that is going to be metal there, I'm going to see if I can't find myself a few lighter areas on the skin there. There. So you see how we, we start to our brushes get a little bit smaller. We start to focus in on certain areas. It, it's kind of sketching some things out. And then we can really start to take advantage of that framework that we constructed. Now this part here, as I take the miniature out of the screen, we got to develop some of this too, right here on his face. I wanted to make sure I had enough green there. Not just for 5 o'clock shadow, but you got the robe. Not the robe, the fur right there. And to me, I don't know, that would, that would be impacting the color of the skin, I would think. At least that's the story I'm going with. 
Now here we are going to just gray that down a little bit. Just a bit of a touch there. Yeah. We got see we got all kinds of nifty thing. We got the rosiness there. Like that. Let's see if we can't Now, the, ironically enough, what's in my way is that spear. <laughs> this is like the second or third time I try to get the brush in there, and just something's literally bouncing off, and that's that crazy spear in, his w in the way, which means I gotta try and go over this way. Alright, trying to give him a little bit of a eyeball there. We're trying to now do some shadow on this because you know you build up your lights yeah but gotta have must have dark to show light and that is what we are trying to do here oh what do we got here what have we got here touch more light on that Impacting the skin causes bruising. Ah, you know what? That is not something I've really tried before. And I'm going to just uh, do some Google searches instead of uh, doing my own bruising. Uh, actually, pfft, wait a minute. I think I just have to look at my foot because my foot is smashed into a vacuum cleaner each of the last three nights because the vacuum cleaner has been at a place where it never usually is. So check that. Maybe I do have my own, my very own bruise reference. Actually, that first night I almost had my own compound fracture reference. Because that was a pretty hard hit. Uh, what uh, what do we want to do with this stuff? Something tells me that I want to go a little on the lighter side with that. So this is the red liner, basically a little bit of my lighter green. It's a tricky thing here because if I put too much of that red in there, it's just going to blend in with the skin. But I just I can't have all of the straps just being well darker. Gotta make that light enough to stand out. Light enough to stand out from that skin. Speaking of which, we're doing a little, a little mid-tone action there. This is almost sort of a purple right there. You know, I'm gonna put a little more. Let's just see what happens when I lighten this up a touch. I'm going to throw me some of that over here too. Not that that particular language made much sense right there. This is the snake bite leather. Mixing it with the maiden flesh. Got to enhance this one part of the right here. See, light up there, then get a little darker. Then back to a little lighter here. I suppose I better get used to painting bone because, well, those osiarchs on the way. That is why. That's why I wanted those because way back in the day, the old painting pyramid, I did some, at least one, maybe two tutorials on painting bone and skeletons. And I thought, well, something like the osiarchs. Wow, that should really be a fantastic possibility for some fantastic bone tutorials. Just have to figure out some kind of a color scheme that's going to be a little different. It just can't be like everything else. It'll be it'll be tough because 
in some ways the the colors that they did were colors that I I did like but my general rule is for army creation is that it cannot certainly can't be anything like what the official stuff is so we'll we'll figure out something there's got to be something I can do And you can see we just pick out a few parts of the oh, wrappings or whatever the heck that is. Just a little bit here and there. This fur, got to do something with that. It's looking a little plain. This is where we're going to maybe give it a bit more of a greenish look here. And by green, I mean it's going to mostly just look gray. But a dead gray just really wouldn't look very interesting at all. So we're getting some green in on the skin, too. Because especially since that's in shadow. Okay, let's maybe hit that with a few brighter spots as well. So you're, I guess getting a de facto fur tutorial out of this N nope nope I went to the maiden flesh there I realized now I gotta go back to the that is the maggot white there I, I suppose you could just I'm trying to think I don't really know too much what would be a good GW equivalent for something like the Maggot white, some kind of a slightly bluish white. I guess I'm just going to have to start looking at GW colors here so I can give you guys some, some hints on that. Here, let's go and do some straight up. That's the snake bite leather contrast mixed with the maiden flesh. You could potentially use... Oh gosh, what was it? Uh, Zandri dust, I think. I, I have used that to, to kind of perform the same task that the Maiden Flesh does. Very similar. Obviously a little bit more towards the yellowish side. The... Is that the maiden flesh? A tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit more pinkish. So what else have we got going here? Let's uh, see if we can't find some lighter areas on the face here. Can you see that? I think you can. I think you can. Gotta get a little bit of light on that lower lip there. And then this stuff, yeah, there's just not much definition here. We gotta figure out what to do in this area. That kind of got left on its own somehow. So we must do more. This needs... Something's got to happen in here. I might try to use our, our greenish light color down in here. See that in the shoulder there? Okay, yeah, we need to get a little bit of light. That's just a big old mass of dark there. We don't like that. Don't like that at all. Let's find ourselves. This is pretty much the, the straight up maggot white, which again, not white. It's gee whiz. I mean, take practically space wolves gray, mix it with white or something, and maybe that is a closer approximation to what that is. Now, I'd love to be able to stick my foliage on there, but. 
that is probably something you want to wait to as close to the end as possible because you could smush that pretty darn easy, especially where that's going to go. Yeah, that, that would definitely be a candidate for some smush in there, and we don't want that. So the bone over here needs... See that a little touch of the green right there? And it, it's so simple. It is just some clear green. And by clear green, I don't mean it's a actual clear color. It's just highly pigmented green. That's all it is. Aha, uh -huh. up here. That, we need that. We need that. Let's get ourselves some lighter colors on on the knuckles here. One of their Uthwan gray is close to... Oh, okay, so that is... I mean, that's something I'll try and snag. Because I'm pretty sure that I have in the past used the Zandri dust as sort of the maiden flesh equivalent. So we'll, we'll grab the... Was that Uthwan gray? See if we can snag some of that. Is that the GW paint supply that I it, it's it's definitely not expansive. Uh -huh. Speaking of, well, speaking of expansive paint lines or whatever, I will be doing potential. I don't know, maybe for the patrons first, but Green Stuff World has a big old new line of fifty acrylic colors that I just got what the day we got back from the convention so I'm trying trying to get that organized and we'll we'll try some of those out see what those are like I have absolutely no idea what those are gonna do you will you'll find out fairly quickly whether or not I, I think that they are something worth getting Obviously, I'll be going back to some of the Creature Caster paints. I was originally going to do a Creature Caster thing here. I I still got that. But I just I saw the, the vellum plants there. And I've been meaning to get to these guys for a while. See, is that, now look, I've got this right here. Do I want to... This is the, the choice here. I can leave my skin tone there, that dark, that green, and then maybe lighten this instead. Cause, yeah, see, my instinct was to get in there and, and screw around with that green. I didn't really want to do with that too much. There, see how we, we add the green to the opposite? So we're getting some sort of reflected light there. But by virtue of that actually just being a greenish gray, it's not going to stand out too much. Got to do something here with the mm, whatever the heck you would call this. Got to, yeah, that just needs some reinforcement here. That's actually some of the wild wood right there. That's, a, yeah, that helps. That helps. There are times where you just, you're working, you're working, you're working, doing a lot of mid-tone and lights. And then sometimes you say, you know what, we just need ourselves a forceful dark in there. And that's what we're going to do all along. Not all on the watchtower, but all along the length of this these strands here. I'm even going to do a little bit of a... Glaze, ah, there we go. It just kind of had lost some of its definition. And we'll get some of it back just with that. Just like that. So again, some nifty stuff going on with our, our skin tones in there. I would like to get... And it's it's really kind of hard to describe. I've got almost a little bit more of a 
pure green here. And what I'd really like to do is maybe double down on some of some green and, and a few of these spots here. I know it sounds like I'm getting pretty darn obsessed with green and the skin tones. But we really do have a lot of that going on. That's just that's just the deal. That's what we are. Now this is almost kind of a purplish skin tone. Now I've got my that reddish stuff over here. Oh, let's play with that. Unfortunately, that is there. That uh, his arm is kind of in the way of all things. But we're just trying to do some of this. Now let's get some of this. It's not lighter skin tone. It's just less dark. That's if that makes any sense. Now some of these things you just can't see. I wish you could. But I just can't turn this thing enough to get it where you can see it. But can you see it? Ah, see what I just was doing in there? That was essentially a like a greenish glaze there. That's pretty fun. Now, this is another another place. Where's that? wild wood these need a little bit of reinforcement here that is what we will do aha uh -huh. yeah sort of a semi glaze semi glaze there and I might even take let's make sure I have to throw some more of the maiden flesh out there but this is the again the snake bite leather there we still have not used any white whatsoever there is no white or even ivory out here now maybe at, at a certain point here I do bring that out maybe a heck I might even bring it out now because we are getting to a point where I want to mess around with those plants. And as much as I'd like to put the tattoo things in there, I sort of like the skin tones where they're at. So I think, now yeah, I might do it later on, but I think on this one I might not do the tattoos. We got some other ones that might be better topics for it. Now, speaking of my green, I almost lost sight of that. Is this where? Ah, I need to move that over a bit. Because right here in his face, that needs, there we go, a bit more of the green there. It's a bit more on his neck over there. I suppose the other thing, too. I will need people to be patient with me as I get used to sort of straight up fantasy figures again because I mean, for the longest time I've basically been doing historical figures or semi-historical or faux-historical I guess in the case of some of this stuff. And now we're getting into darn near just wild fantasy type stuff and for me it's it's a little bit jarring a little bit jarring now what I am going to do is grab a little bit of this ghostly moss I'm just going to throw this out here somewhere I'm going to take some of that clear green I'm going to get more of that back out over here like this yeah Let's see if we can't do ourselves some verdigris stuff. So, can you see what, what's going on right here? It's kind of the center of the palette there. A mm, little more of the turquoise. Now I've got some secret weapon weathering colors that are pretty nifty for that too. But we're just trying to make our own. i got a little leviathan blue in here. 
let's water this down almost a bit of a wash here so see see this right here let's see if we did enough with our reds to get ourselves some verdigris here and I might stretch that color out into a few places here too maybe even on the the rock here or whatever maybe this metal thing right there so let's see if we can go a touch lighter here maybe there so what I'm gonna have to do is either darken up that red or something like that to have that show up as much as I like I'm actually going to get some of this again that's my verdigris color but it's gonna go into some other places maybe places you would not expect it to be like oh I don't know on my bone up here Because we're just we're losing control. It's all completely out of control. I would maybe even like to see a touch of that there on the skin. Oh, what the heck! Let's go a few other places with it here, like on the leather straps even because why not so why don't we let's see if we can just introduce our our little foliage bits here so that's these guys right here here let's see if we can yank these off of here without breaking them up too bad right come on there that's better I'm gonna get rid of this glove because I need some more tactile sense and now you can see how we've started to organize these a little bit see if we make them kind of stand up a bit Now, a couple of things that I can do to quite literally plant these guys. See, we're, we're sort of sculpting those a little bit. Just kind of bending them. I can take my pin here. I'm actually going to sharpen it a bit. There. One second. The advantage of this cork right here because I can just shove this thing down in here where do we want this to be do we want it here or over here that's the question uh, let's go over here what the heck we only only live once so what I'm gonna do is just try and make myself a bit of a hole here All right, trying to get my foliage here in place. So again, just bear with me here. I, I promise you it'll be worth it. So somewhere is glue. And hopefully this is not going to be just glue all over the place or end up being no glue at all. So no glue in there maybe there's glue in here no glue in there either I'm just gonna try and shove this thing down in here so just again give me a minute or two come on I 
be a whole lot easier to have that cooperated. Aha. There we go. All right, so now we've got some foliage over here. Now let's just spread that out a little more. Now we can paint that. Let's get some of our lighter greens here, maybe. Sorry, trying to get that on screen for you now. And you can paint this stuff up reasonably well once it's already in place. It's usually easier to add in just a few dark outlines slash details or whatever later on. Uh, see how that starts to become part of the hole here? Now I also have to get the other side. Here, let's go a step lighter now. Another step later, especially right here. Sorry, I keep wandering off the screen here. It's can be a little crazy. One thing I do want to check real quick is my chat, just to make sure it's okay. I think we're up to date. Just the chat had a nasty habit of disappearing after a while. So see how we're starting to add now some lights to the end of the foliage there. Now the other thing I do have, since the super glue seems to all be gone, I will be using some of the sand and gravel glue to put some flock in place. to get a little more of that greenishness in there. I might even go a touch lighter beyond that. So see how my plants start to have now a little bit of shading. Let's go the opposite way. Let's start to, I've been doing all the light stuff. Let's get some darker stuff here. So right along this now it looks like we have sort of that central frond right there. Now just imagine you're doing this with the paper foliage and you've got this big old hunk of metal that's supposed to sit in there. It just doesn't really look natural at all. There's no freedom of movement to it or anything. It just looks really nasty. So here's that. Can... Well, look what I'm doing to this frond. See, I can take it and bend it. Look how it comes out and down across this here. You just you can't do that with the paper foliage. It'll just break. It'll just plain break. Yeah, see how we can get the nice little bit of shading on the end of these fronds like that. Which I hope you guys can see. I think you can. I think you can. There, so let's real quick here. I'm just going to move this slightly out of the way. We're going to grab some of this. This is from MIG Ammo right here. Really like this stuff. 
and actually give it a bit of a stir here and then open this sucker up and I've got myself in my little container here just a, just a little mix of flock let's just grab ourselves just a brush over here throw this stuff on I do is pour some of that in here. Doesn't take very much. Doesn't take very much. Now you do have to remember that it ta it's uh, it's gonna start out kind of on the glossy side. It just that's just kind of how it is. Here, let's find ourselves another another brush. Let's put some of this in here. I'll just get some of this sand and gravel glue down in the bottom of where that frond is so that has starts to adhere a little bit there there now get some more of my glue and then we're going to drizzle on some of our flock here We even have a little more difference now with their skulls right there. Don't want to do too much of it. Don't want to do too much. I think I want to get a little bit on my bit of stonework here. So again, we're going to throw some of the sand and gravel glue, and then I'm just going to drizzle on my my flock there. So again, another, ah, there we go. It's a little bit of a difference there now. Texture-wise, we've got our foliage here. we got more foliage over here. All of a sudden, a lot of the reds that are on him, they start to emerge a little more. Now over here, i got to think, I might save that for more fronds, but what I am going to do is along here, Go with some of this. So that kind of gets down in between the rocks there now. I'm going to switch my lights here again real quick for you. So you can see that. There. Now let's get some over here too. So again, that's the sand and gravel glue. I'll drop it right in there. Just gonna brush it on. It's from MIG ammo. And then uh, here we go. Yeah, can I do this a couple of times too? If I want a little bit of a heavier application. But now, see that starts to look more like it's part of the overall structure. Oh, um, missed the first part. What foliage is that? We are going to show you the right here so it is from wicked elf now uh gary you've seen the the butterflies right oh look <laughs> so these are some of the vellum butterflies and i just so happen to have one here so see the pink kind of glowing butterflies there yeah see that one in her hand or on her hand there yeah those are the the vellum butterflies there, all part of the same thing. And here is the vellum foliage. Now somewhere is there's one more frond left over here. And I'm going to see if I can't maybe put that somewhere. See if I can pull this off of here. We don't want to shatter that so that's what the front looks like I'm going to now switch my lights again I'm going to try and bend this a little bit here give it a little bit of shape that's the advantage of the vellum stuff 
now where can we put this do we put it in our original thing or do we maybe put it over here I'm gonna try that over there so I'm gonna take my pen stick that in there basically make a little bit of a hole get some sand and gravel glue in there not tip that over let's see if I can just there we go so say I've got myself another frond sticking out over there now this one might just have to leave this one alone here and just paint it myself later on because again the super glue for whatever reason chose to just uh, not work or no yeah well they were all out basically kind of unfortunate but that is from again from wicked elf now do we want to add some other kind of foliage to this besides just those Let's see what else we got here now these are also from green stuff world here I think yeah, let's rip some of this out and let's just see if it looks right because we can always paint this remember here let's get our scissors here and chop this up pull this apart here a bit now that I don't know. Eh, almost kind of looks, doesn't quite look right compared to everything else. We are not going to throw that in there. What we're going to do is go with some more of our, just more of this here. So sand and gravel glue again. And we're just going to, I'm just going to go with some of that sand and gravel glue here. And we'll just dump some of this, some of the flock into there. And look at the difference that makes there. Now, so we have the greenishness next to the kind of the reds on the shoe. I'm going to get rid of some of this extra junk here. Got to move my palette maybe back into place. So let's see if I can't find myself some actual working super glue somewhere. And no, nope, there is just oh wait a minute. Yeah. Yay, working super glue. How's that? Just a little touch there. Reason why there's no super glue around here is because a lot of it is getting set up for that lizard man basing I'm just gonna I'm just using my pin here to move this around a little essentially kind of sculpting it and so we have it kind of hanging off the edge there see if we can't get ourselves some paint onto that lighten it up a touch here and there ah there we go so we'll lighten the center line and now we'll paint some of the leaves you do have to be a little bit patient with this it can take some practice to just kind of get a handle on it and I've only just used it a few times myself let's get ourselves a little bit lighter here just looking to go right down the center of this there and hit a few of the edges of the leaves there we go now what I am gonna do is 
for the heck of it. Let's see if I can't get myself a little bit of this super glue stuck down. There. Maybe even a little more. Then flatten this guy out a bit. I'm just trying to hang that right over the front there. And then we'll drop a little bit of our foliage in there to cover that up. So let's get back to maybe a little bit of just regular painting here again. Now remember over here, I was talking about darkening that up. What happens if I, yeah, that's what I needed to do. Let's actually just hit that with a few little lights there. Sometimes you, you're thinking you got to add a bunch of dark, and then it turns out just the opposite. You got to add more light. Oh, yeah, we thought about doing some, some blood effects on this. Oh, what the heck? Let's do that. Let's have some fun. So just allow me to get my cover onto this. We are going to grab a few different little things here. So we've got ourselves from Green Stuff World, True Blood. We got Fresh Blood here. And we've even been using some of this. Was it Blood for the Blood God? Yep. There. So I'll throw those three things out. We are going to grab ourselves something like this. Move this out of the way. Actually, I think I'm going to keep my palette out here. But put this on top of it. Yeah, I'll go with that. And I think we're going to, yeah, we'll see what we can do here, blood effects wise. Maybe keep it to a kind of a bit of a minimum. What we're going to do is we'll put all three of these out. So this is the blood for the blood god here. That's first. There's a little bit of difference in the texture of these. So that's probably the thickest of them, I would say. And naturally, the ghost tints are going to be the thinnest. Now we're going to go in the middle here. This is the green stuff world. That's over here. So see how that's much thinner? That's in, like, a whole lot thinner. Here, let's prop this thing up so it doesn't just there like so and now this will be the thinnest but also the darkest and most intense of all three this is the fresh blood look at how much darker that is but look at how much thinner that is look at that let's see how they all have a little different different look to them let's uh let's play let's play we will begin with our fresh blood, oh, true blood from Green Stuff World. Let's do something like this. Now you can see this is pretty light, pretty transparent, and that is the go that's the goal. That's the idea for starters. That is our. That's what we want to do. To start with. want to get some here as well there and so get some more oh let's let some of that start to build up in the area so not too much though it's, it's nice that we can Kind of push this stuff around a bit. Uh, 
And now this is some of our true blood here. This is the GW stuff, but see what that does? It's a little bit thicker. So see, look at how that has some actual kind of dimension to it. Little bit of dimension to it. Let's double down on that maybe. We can always add more layers of it too. But now, this is where we're going to go in with our fresh blood. That's the, see how that just kind of really darkens things down. That's also kind of on the translucent side. Actually, I need to go with a finer application on this here. A little bit of finer application. Because I want to see how we're not quite a spatter here, but just a almost like these little bit of lines where it's kind of traveled across. I also have to get my underside of this weapon here too. There. A little more. And you know, we want to get some uh, more of a congealed look at some of the red liner. We will mix that. Ah, what the heck, we'll throw a little bit of the Blood for the Blood God in there to thicken that up. So now we've got ourselves some glossiness there. Now the stuff on the ground, best to have that be pretty dark and coagulated there. So that's what we're going to do. Again, taking some of the, you could even mix out oh, the wild wood, I suppose, in with the blood for the blood god. But there's there we've got some, we got some width and dimension on that. Oh, what the heck? Maybe some of it ends up on his hands there. Yeah, you know, we could do. Oh, what the heck? Let's do some on the spear here too. No guts, no glory. There. In some ways, letting some of that mix together a bit. It's another one of those color things because, see, we got all this green down here, and now we've got the red of the blood effects. I think we've fortunately managed to play with uh, a lot of the things that I really wanted to mess around with. I, I know we didn't do the tattoos, but we've got all those other ones, and I add, they actually have a little better area for that, I want to say. be a little bit easier to work with that on those. Plus, well, time-wise, because I really don't want to be getting to bed at 6 o'clock in the morning here. You know what, maybe, oh, what the heck, we're going to have a tiny bit of, almost, say a little bit of bud splatter there. Let's see. It's a tiny little minute amount. Can you even see that? It's tough to see, I know. Oh, hey, Dominic, how's it going? So, yeah, we've been we've been hard at work on this guy here. The War Cry Untamed Beasts. 
been having a lot of fun with this. We did the paper foliage here. That is from again from Wicked Elf here. Well, not paper. It's vellum foliage. That's the key. <laughs> Actually, paper, not real super handy, but vellum foliage. Oh yeah, that is some great stuff. Some really great stuff. Yeah, let's grab some leviathan blue with the green and let's get ourselves some nice rich darks into this foliage here. And maybe even onto Yeah. I'm gonna use some of this here on our fur in places. Because again, sometimes you just have you have all the lights that you need, but not enough of the darks. In fact, I'm just gonna throw a bit of a glaze right there. And you know what the heck? I'm gonna throw another glaze right there. Just because. Now remember, we talked about maybe getting some white. See if we can find something here. Yeah, here's some this is just some straight up white. Just throw it out there. I'm gonna move my water out of the way here. And once again, this is mixing it. This is the white with the contrast there. Snake bite leather. And all I want to do is just find a few highlights right along this little kind of a ridge line right here. There we go. Now I I love to be doing a uh, you know a bunch of recorded video tutorials here this is always the it's the quickest way to get some videos done because it saves me oh my gosh about six hours of editing and rendering and uploading and all that other kind of stuff so sometimes there's just no other way to do it except with the live sessions so if you wonder why sometimes there's a recorded video versus one of these or vice versa. All right, I'm going to go back to that green again. Because I really love that green. Let's see if we can't get some of that onto this. Maybe even that metal ring there. I just wish I knew what this was supposed to be. Is it supposed to be almost like a chain or something? It is really, it's just kind of hard to tell. Now we're back into this a bit of a lighter color here. See if I can do something with it. This has to have a little more something, something on it. I don't want to do that too bright because then it might just start to look like steel cable. And just something tells me that's not what it's supposed to look like. Or B. Just a couple little highlights there. And I think we're going to do the same into here. I, I'm going to... Hmm. Okay. Let's see if we can't drop in one more of the highlights on the skin. If we're not going to be doing the tattoos in there, Right. Sometimes the new brushes will have a little bit of a burr on the end of them. You just have to 
I don't want to say break them in, but you have to just sort of use them enough until that goes away. It's about the best way I can describe it. There. So I, I do hope this is useful. I know it gets a little crazy. You know, we've got foliage out here. We've got a million different things all going on, what seems like all at the same time. But I, I do try to give you guys as complete a tutorial as I can. Yeah, I'd, it would be great if I could just grab something that's already in progress on the, the desk or whatever and keep messing around with that. But then you start to wonder, well, okay, how did all that other stuff get done? You know, we're kind of three quarters of the way through. That's why I, I generally shy away from doing multi-episode things here on the the live episodes. That's what the Patreon page is for. And that's scrolling right across the screen right there. Typical army painting tutorial series like, like I do is five episodes long. And again, the most recent one for the Warcry fans is my Cypher Lords. I'll start over in a little while. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dominic. Much appreciated. But yeah, you can always watch these things from the beginning. And like I said, I've got not just the fire guy, but remember our raptor here. Remember more blood effects, snow effects. So we did the f the lava with the snow, and now we're kind of doing the the jungle stuff here. I think you can sense the, the theme that I'm trying to give you several different possible themes and m uh, method of basing. Let's get a touch of these bright highlights here on the metal, perhaps. Maybe a few little lights there. Oh, yeah, on the skin there, maybe. Sorry if you couldn't see that. I kind of had to move it off camera to be able to see it. Alrighty. Yeah, the, the skulls now, they're really starting to just kind of blend in there. They don't show up too much. I've got a little bit of this turquoise here. Let's want to see. Ah, there we go. That's it. wanted to get my foliage a couple of brighter colors too make that stand out a touch more same thing on this guy and on this guy As you do that, it really starts to set your foliage. Yeah, really makes it look like it's not just some kind of two-dimensional thing that you slapped on there. Uh, it's just it's like the miniature itself. Even the miniatures, they need some help to get some shape to them. And we're sort of doing the same thing. We're lending the foliage some shape by giving it that shading. So see now we're we start to add in some of the lighter colors and our the the fur there that starts to change that around. Okay, what about what about here? This there's not a lot going on here. I've got my verdigree green and you say what the heck you're gonna use the verdigree green color on that fur, yes I am, because I'm just that crazy. I'm also going to use it on parts of the helmet there. Just gives us some different color. If that's a helmet, I'm still not quite sure yet. 
But that's the story we're going with. Here, that's some of that sepia liner. Oh my goodness. Now you can barely see what I'm doing there, but I'm just kind of on the flip side of the wrappings. Trying to work in some color there. I'm going to see if I, what we've got blood effects wise here that, where's my red liner? There we go. So again, that's the blood for the blood guy. There's our ghost tint. Now we're mixing in. We got the red liner there. We have to remember that red liner is going to dull it down. So it's not going to be as shiny, which means there's back to my ghost tint there. Okay, what the heck, we'll try and get a few more little blood drops on the ground here, because that's just fun. Does it always make sense? Eh, maybe not. But I think it's fun. Back to a little bit of a darker tone here getting some separation now I'm a foliage and then I want some you know, we again we're working in the light lighter side of things we're gonna hit that with a little bit of a glaze to darken some things down that boot actually needs a little something more color wise value wise so we're mixing up something here that's about yep that's about what I was hoping for Let's see if we can't get a bit of a light here on the end of the shoe uh, Gary Cox thing I think it is braided dwarf hair rope well I mean that this it's it's fantasy after all. It could darn well be that. It does look a bit as as you mentioned, it kinda reminds me of those dwarf braids. Oh and somewhere somewhere in this house, which may be revealed as we create more filming areas for us. There are the, some of the old, well, I guess you'd call them old, but the Forge World, was it the Chaos Dwarf War Engines, War Machines? Those are around somewhere, and I want to do me some of those. I also uncovered a Forge World Abomination with a rider on it. I forget what that, Trevor told me what that was called, I forgot already. But I also have the Great Taurus. Yeah. Talk about some serious object source lighting. And, well, now I'm going to put it on a big old oval base. Which should be pretty darn fun. So there's a, a whole bunch of stuff. Now, stuff like that, that's probably going to be a Patreon thing. Because that's a... It's going to take multiple episodes. Heck, it's going to take me an entire episode or two just to make the base for that monstrosity. When you do sign up for the Patreon page, you do that the Army Painter pledge. Oh my goodness, you will be getting links to somewhere around 220, 230 hours of tutorials. And that's no joke. That is not a joke whatsoever. It's just that much. Between the army painting series, the dark sword stuff, basing tutorials, you name it. There's a whole bunch of stuff. And it's, there's only going to be more. We're going to be adding, well, going to get to more Lord of the Rings stuff. 
uh, blood bowl yes the the lizard men those are prepped and ready to go I'll be priming the figures and filming the basing episode tomorrow so that is one of the new army series that's going on again for the patrons so if you like your blood bowl there will be blood bowl teams the Ossiarchs of course those well those are on the way and whenever the sisters come out that is going to be the subject of many tutorials because I used to have a sister's army and I want a sister's army again pretty much the only way that's possible is via the patreon page so we we're adding that kind of turquoise where's that coming from it's coming from here from our verdigre effect right color goes somewhere it must go everywhere I know it can be hard to think of that all the time and then sometimes you just say oh man I don't know that I, I don't want to ruin it I hear that so often but sometimes just not trying it you end up with almost as much of a problem as if you did try it and it didn't quite work out the way you wanted I always try to encourage people to get past that whole oh, I don't want to ruin it stage because there's just so many fun things that you can do and well you can't do any fun things if you're always afraid that that you're just going to ruin it or whatever I want to get some of this down in here too but you notice it's kind of watery that is what I was hoping for it kind of gives me a little bit of a sky color in there I didn't want to do sky earth but I mean we got to represent the sky somewhere if that's supposed to be some kind of metal now I'm gonna go back into my wildwood here sorry I'm bouncing things around just trying to get to a good spot Once again, doing a little bit of reinforcement. Same thing here, but also trying not to crush my precious vellum foliage here. So I think our blood effects are doing pretty well. Those little droplets there. what else have we got here we need touch more structure right here that kinda got lost somehow hmm, I'm gonna go into my verdigree once again into this wrapping so because it if it's all just one color like a tan or whatever it's going to be boring as heck and it's a little too prominent as far as where it is to be that boring now gotta work that into here somehow because that, that's starting to actually mesh with the skin color there so we we're gonna just take it off of that make it slightly more greenish there didn't used to add this much green back in the day did not used to do that so much but I suppose the painting styles kinda of change your color palette changes at least you hope it does mine I don't want to say it was forced on me or something like that but because of the historicals I I had to change had to change my palette 
quite a bit, sort of. Let's see if we can't get a little more color out of him. I'm going to try and sneak in. Aha, here we go. Some almost more of a pink type color here under the face. Let's see if we can do that. We got plenty of the green. Aha, that is what I was hoping for. So, again, this is right here. There. And I've got to get some kind of a light there. Got to hit the bottom lip here with something. Sometimes you just have to go. You, you put that light in there, and then you have to go back in with the dark and get rid of where it had an overflow. And just how it is sometimes. Now, this is some of the, we got the white here. Yeah, looking to hit a few of my metal areas. Oh, what the heck? Maybe just because we're sort of focusing in on that area, that's we'll indulge ourselves in a few lighter white things here. Yeah, like that. Where else do we want to go with these? Maybe a few little shots on the fur here. So this is, what, less than two and a half hours. I mean, this thing went from, I mean, just primed, barely primed, to that. The the thing that some people have a tough time getting used to is that the, those of you that have seen this from the beginning or about to, you'll see that that opening phase, the opening part of the drama, it just looks kind of weird. It doesn't look like a whole bunch of anything. And that's the hardest thing, I believe, for people to wrap their heads around is that we're not just doing the face. Because what do you see? Oh gosh, I to, it's maybe not 100%, but if it's not, it's got to be in the high 90s. What do you see? You see them working on just a part of it. So we're working on the sword, or we're working on this one eyebrow. And that's that's great. Those of us that need to get miniatures painted a little bit faster than that, which is a bunch of us, sometimes you have to be willing to... Oh, I think we did. I guess we... No, there we go. So Oliver Frank... Oh, thanks. Thanks, Oliver. I'm glad you were able to, to find this. I try to do these as often as I can and be sure to... You know, Go back to the beginning part. I mean, we've we've done blood effects here. We've done the the foliage stuff. Here, are vellum plants. So there's lots of fun things to see on this guy here. Oh, and I guess uh, what's the thing that I always forget to do? Oh yeah, not just subscribe, but hit the bell for all notifications. The only reason I mention that is because I forgot to do that earlier today. I found a really fantastic terrain artist, and I subscribed, but I forgot to hit the bell for all notifications. So I'm going to have to go back tomorrow and do that because essentially some of the things that I saw there 
I, I believe I can incorporate that. Now he's doing it on obviously large terrain pieces. Oh, excellent, Oliver. I, I think, uh, but it's really going to be interesting you know, having when you see it where it is here. And oh my gosh, I'm sure it looked really different. I mean, massively different a couple of hours ago. Here, see, I'm taking some of the Fire Slayer flesh, and I'm now I'm just going to darken a few of these. So this is where I'm using it as, for lack of a better term, just a dry glaze, really. I'm getting a little more red there. Oh, what the heck? Let's see if we can't get a little, yeah, a little bit of red there around the the nose and the and the mouth there. Now somewhere I've got the Untamed Beast cards, and that's it. Says what this particular guy's in there, and I've heard his name said in some battle reports. Now, just imagine there will come a time here where I'm actually doing Warcry battle reports with these guys. Because we certainly are working on the terrain. Kathy's got her warband darn near done. Oh, hey, Kim. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, that oh, the Lannister. Yeah, the... Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to decide. What was the favorite of those units? The, those the Halberds. Those were fun. I really like doing the crossbow guys. But I think... I just have a feeling that my favorite was the Mountains Men in Oils. Because, oh, I love doing stuff in oils. I'm hoping that... Now, I might do the Osiarchs. Maybe not all of it in oils. Maybe I'll, I'll try and do maybe one unit in acrylics, one unit in oils. That way you can sort of see how they compare. But boy, the mountains, man. And I actually did it, was it Reapercon? I did some of the Kingsguard in oils. Also fun. It's just, it's a nice mellow sort of thing. And what's weird is, you know, see, I'm, okay, here, let's, like right here. This, this upper shoulder, I'm just going to pop in a quick little glaze there like that. I can still do that with oils, even though that's all wet. Something I never thought was possible. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just uh, doing the old darkening down on the end of these these guys. The mountains, man. Oh, and the king's guard. Ah, oh, man, I tell you that. See, so you're you're looking at the show as a reference, and of course, well, they're off. They're according to the books, not the show. Although the weirdest thing had to be the warrior sons and their rainbow cloaks. I actually have done a second unit as a commission with just red cloaks and the my typical kind of Lannister freehand that I've done on so many things. Oh, geez, yeah, you'll have to see the, the pyromancers. They are... That I've been working on the unit. I was doing that at Gamehole Con. And that turned out pretty wild because of all the glowing stuff. Green glowing fire everywhere. Which I have to decide if I want to do that on my Asiarchs or not. I want to have them kind of have lots of glow. A little bit of a challenge from my normal thing because, well, sadly, they still do not make a oil paint that is fluorescent. Now, i got to get a little bit of light here. See that on the back edge of this? Oh, yeah, the pyromats. Boy, wait till you see the pictures of the unit. It's 
Sadly, it's in the other room. I can't run and get it right now. But that was pretty wild. There must be... Well... I would like to on the... Oh, gosh. What do I have? A Night Haunts. I've got me some Night Haunts. I've also got... Oh, who are the... Now, why was I thinking Grave Guard all of a sudden? Now, well, that's a Tomb King's thing. But there's another... Not the Night Haunts. But I've got some Black Knights. Ah, the box is sitting right behind me, too. And I just can't turn around and look at it. Oh, yeah, let's get some of the Leviathan Blue in here. We've been fooling around with lots of browns and everything else. Let's... Let's get something different right in here. Get some... Se oh, yeah, we need some separation there. What better way to do that than some cooler colors sinking down? We did the wild wood an awful lot. Now we're going to do Leviathan Blue. Sort of a super controlled wash right there. It's not black lining because so we're letting it sort of spread around. I will do some of that here, too. On whatever that is. Green glowing on red, you bet. Oh, Kim, that was just a... Oh, man, that, that fluorescent green. And it wasn't just, I mean, any old red. You saw it. It was very intense red. Very deep. Speaking of deep, aha, yeah. So this is some of that Leviathan blue again. And we're just trying to get that way down. And in those crevices there. A bit more there. So that really helped there. We're starting to get some separation there. Where the hand is. I think I need to get some of this. Now we're going to take some wild wood, mix it with the blue. We're going to see if we can darken down our skulls here in a few places. I think we successfully kept those skulls pretty dark. I need to get that other eye socket there and that one. All right, that helps. Now, we got to do some of that over here. Yep. So now this is, we're starting to tie some things together here. This is, you know, this is that sort of fun part where you really get to do those, those, refinements that's kind of the reward now okay we talked remember earlier a while back about how you just have to kind of grin and bear it where it doesn't look really hot at all for quite a while whereas the other approach kind of that standard thing if you paint a little bit of it like just a face and then you have yourself a finished face yay but nothing else well, just think of this right here. Okay, I get to see the really nifty looking stuff everywhere all at once, basically. You know, we've got our skin tones here. Look at that. We got our blood effects. We got trees. We got skulls. We got blood splatter. We got some metal stuff going on here. So, yeah, I mean, you can have the, the glory of seeing the face done or the one part, just the weapon done. But this way, it's pretty much all at once now. And this would probably not look too shabby out there on the on the board. Now, whether or not he's going to roll nothing but quads, that's another thing altogether. Who knows how that's going to go. Right, I'm going to see if I, if I can... Uh, Squeeze in here. 
Oh yeah, just a touch of see that a little bit of light in there. Well, hopefully you can see that. And then going to try and reflect some of that without smushing my plants. See right there is where I'm trying to reflect that. Let's get that a little lighter if we can. And now we're going to go the flip side of that and take some of it away. Oh, thanks, Oliver. Yeah, you know, it's... Well, sp speaking of... Because Kim mentioned those, the, the pyros and the, the halberds and stuff. I, those were all done. Well, the halberds, the mountains, man, those were all done in those those army painting series. In those army painting series, they're only about the entire thing is 13 and a half hours long. That's for 12 figures. Now, granted, that's not counting the prepping, you know, the filing and all that other kind of stuff. But it does cover the basing and a whole lot of that work. It's just, it's unfortunate because I know some folks, when they, they tune into these and they're just not used to it or whatever, and they they see the unholy mess that it is when it starts out, and it just turns them off right away. They say, oh, God, what is this? I don't want to see this. This is horrible. It does kind of make me sad because I, I just wish that they could... Just stick around long enough to sort of see how it all ties in together. Now, we, we talked about this a lot at Game Hole Con and, and such, where, okay, yes, there's a many years of 2D art experience also at work here, which is not what your average person is necessarily going to have. So there is that, that notion of, well, don't panic. Just let the process play out. Also, that idea that for 85% of the time, it looks like nothing. I mean, it's just, just like, it looks like it's not it's going backwards not forwards but somehow you can you can see it it ends up going forward all right and when you do these things like see the the green that I'm adding here the the green in the flesh was it really that hard i just i said well what the heck? We're just going to hit the, the shadow areas with a little green. That's all it was. There wasn't a million glazes. Not 20 million layers of paint. Just sort of, uh, yeah, we'll just throw some green over here. And because I'm working on all areas at the same time, it makes it a little bit easier to to follow through on that like here okay I've got green on the brush I'm going to try and throw green down there green over here I wonder is any of my aha uh -huh. so okay there's my I think that oh, that's true blood over there I'm looking for some, ah, some wild wood here and some more of my ghost tint. Just getting a little more of my blood effect going here. I'm going to see if I can't. Because some of the uh, true, no, blood for the blood gods kind of congealed a little bit. Uh, I was hoping that that could give me a little more weight on the end of these blood effects here. All right, 
couple of more couple of more strokes on this not with the extra hair sitting on it though there so like I said you can check out the other videos the the two raptor ricks the Oh, what was what else did we do that was war crow oh, I actually have the the glaive wraith there's of course the Lord of the Rings stuff yeah I'm gonna try and sneak in ever so slightly here it's kind of blocked just a little more highlight here. Come on, there we go. Maybe on some of the the deltoids there. I think maybe get a little more definition on the knuckles there. There. So hopefully this is fine. Yeah, we got the vellum foliage here. We got the blood effects. We got some skin, some some metal. Got a lot of fun little things going on here. Got their foliage, green stuff world on the big skulls. Plenty of stuff going on. I hope this was, eh, just gave you some ideas for things. Just want to say, well, thanks to Oliver and Kim. And we're going to go here. Oh, Gary, of course, and Dominic, and Bethany was here. Corvus Miniatures. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and thanks for telling me about that. Your convention. Oh, Comitrion, Merrick. And, oh, and Will and Trevor. Will and Trevor were in first. So thanks again, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. What that was today? Thursday. Try and catch you. Who knows? Maybe Friday or Saturday. But thanks again, and be sure to kind of click on that, uh, oh, that subscribe button there. Do the bell notification and get to see more fun stuff like this. So thanks again, everybody. I will catch you later.